Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to share with you all of the upgrades that I did to my Creality Ender 3 uh, 3D printer. Uh, basically I started by adding um, an Octopi server, obviously running on a Raspberry Pi. This happens to be a 3B+, Plus, which I had laying around, so it was really easy to implement. And then I wanted to add some remote control capabilities one of which was the ability to shut off the printer automatically once the print was done. And so I chose to use a power um, uh, uh, meter to monitor the wattage used uh, by the printer. And once that wattage went below a certain value, uh, uh, it shuts off the printer after five minutes. It uses a Sonoff uh, POW uh, smart switch. And... Um, uh, basically, the printer normally draws about 100 to 150 watts when it's being used, depending on the temperature. Uh, so what I do is once it, draw, it drops below um, 5 watts, uh, then it waits 5 minutes and it shuts off. And actually, that is controlled by an automation, uh, by an integration, rather, run by Home Assistant. Uh, so this is really integrated with uh, Octopi as well as Home Assistant, from which I can control certain things as well. Um, I also wanted the ability to turn on a lamp externally, so I have this lamp that I plug in the back now and uh, that allows me to turn the light on so that I can see what the camera uh, of, of the Octopi is seeing. Here's the little arm. And, um, and of course, um, I, I needed to have a switch that also turns that lamp on. So again, another Sonoff switch was added for that. And then finally, I wanted to have the um, ability to turn the Raspberry Pi uh, that controls the Octopi server, be able to uh, be reset um, before you do a shutdown, to do a shutdown rather, before you actually power it off, uh, and then uh, physically shut off the power to the Raspberry Pi. So that created another uh, demand for another switch, uh, again, another Sonoff switch. So, of course, I ended up with a massive uh, rat's nest of wires running all over the place uh, between uh, powering the Raspberry Pi um, and controlling the different um, uh, power uh, switches uh, for the, 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 th the three different uh, Sonoff switches. Also, I wanted to have the ability to manually turn those features on and off from a uh, control switch. Uh, so, I will describe to you how I added these buttons here. But basically, let me give you a rundown here of what this looks like today. So again, Ender 3, um, uh, regular, not the Pro. Uh, it does have the 64-bit controller. Um, the standard display, I was going to go digital uh, with a digital touch display once I added the Raspberry Pi uh, Octopi, but I decided just not to overdo it. Uh, because at the end of the day, I don't really use the display for much. Uh, I control it primarily from the um, Octoprint server. Uh, to integrate the um, uh, Raspberry Pi, I chose to use this design. Somebody did do this on uh, Thing uh, Thingiverse, so I got this out of Thingiverse. I did make some modifications to it. Um, and basically, I made this little uh, module here that allows you to attach the arm removable. So there are actually two screws that are holding this uh, on, on, the, on, this, uh, the, on the side case right here. Uh, the, two, the screws are on the inside. And um, I also modified the interior a little bit to eliminate a lot of the extra platform that sits there underneath the Raspberry Pi, which is really not necessary. I chose not to add the fan. I did leave the uh, fan um, uh, in here, um, but uh, I did monitor the temperature afterwards. It still sits at a steady 49 to 50 degrees, so there is no need to add the fan. I did add some cooling holes over here, over here. Uh, and also on the meat. I will show you what that looks like on the meat. Um, I'm going to open it up in a few minutes um, and uh, I'll show you what's inside these boxes. Uh, so I 3D printed this obviously and um, then I printed another box that slides into the dovetail right here of the 4040 channel um, which holds the um, uh, buck converter to go from 12 volts to, to the 5 volts for the Raspberry Pi. It also holds um, an SV, a Sonoff SV, which is a five volt, uh, well actually uh, five to 24 volt uh, smart switch, uh, again from, from ITED. 
and then it holds a relay module that is connected to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. And that allows me to turn on these LED lights. Let me see if I can show you that, that I added under here. Okay, so this uh, channel, I 3D printed this channel, I put some foil, uh, adhesive paper, and then the LEDs underneath these are just white LEDs that I used to basically illuminate the, the platform down here. And those are 12 volts LEDs, so they need their own power supply. Um, and then finally, inside this box back here, this is another project I got out of Thingiverse, and this is called Universal Electronic Enclosure, I believe. Um, and um, again, I modified this, so I added this uh, screw hole right here. There's a tab for it. Uh, see if you can see that better. There's a tab that comes off on this side, and there's a so this this hole was not there before. I believe this cutout was there. Uh, this one on the lid was not there for the for the wire for the sensor right here. And then there is another uh, hole on the cover of this side to accommodate this connector right here of this uh, motor control driver. Uh, of course, this plug wasn't there. This is where I plug in my lamp, okay, which is controlled by the uh, uh, Sonoff switch. And then you'll see here that this is a temperature and humidity sensor uh, of the Sonoff TH. The reason why I use the Sonoff TH as one of the switches uh, which controls amp. Uh, the reason why I use the TH is just because I had it laying around. So basically everything that you're going to see in here are parts that I had laying around. So it was just a matter of kind of integrating them all into the same thing. Uh, I 3D printed these uh, plugs, these end connectors, which I extended beyond the, uh, the 4040 channel, just so that this thing doesn't slide out because this essentially slides into the, uh, uh, into the dovetails of the 4040 channel. Uh, and it just sits there. There is one screw here and one screw there that keeps the top uh, in place. But again, it's really just to prevent anything from falling inside because uh, it's not, uh, doesn't have to be structural or anything like that. And as you can see, there's a hole on the cover. Uh, that was another design change I made to feed the wires through from this side uh, to off to the other side. Also, I taught, I got this uh, design out of Thingiverse as well, where basically the power connector uh, and switch was moved from the side to the back. I really like this. Uh, I made it, um, it, it is a little bit deeper, so it comes all the way down to the channel uh, itself, as opposed to being suspended off of it. There are some pass-through holes in the back here and in the back here. And so uh, it is uh, spaced off the channel itself. Again, another change I made so that I could feed these wires through. And then as you can see, the wire comes to the top here, goes through this uh, panel guide, and then it goes into this box. And again, I'll tell you more about this box in a minute. Um, so now this switch is no longer wired to power the power supply directly. It is actually wired to turn on the 110 throughout this box. So when I turn this on, it powers off all of my Sonoff switches and that's it. And then of course the power supply is now hardwired into the Sonoff POW. So it's not until I turn on the Sonoff switch that this doesn't go on. And of course, once this goes on, the Sonoff POW knows how much current is drawing and I can use that for automation. So that's the beauty of that scenario. Uh, so really the, the extra one is the Sonoff TH here that is, you know, don't need to have that. But I figured, hey, you know what? It's got the temperature sensor, temperature and humidity sensor. It's nice to know what the temperature is around the printer, just in case I want to use that for some automation in the future. So it's there. Um, also, I designed um, most of it anyways, this um, uh, guide here, which uses two uh, uh, ball bearing uh, uh, guides here. And basically it is to feed the filament through, uh, keep it nice and straight. And as you can see there, there is a switch that is used as the filament sensor, okay? And this has a little roller bearing on it uh, and it really works very well. You can see that roller bearing moving when the filament rides across it. So it's really being utilized properly. Uh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty decent sized switch. It's about 10 millimeter in size. Uh, and it does a good job of keeping that filament nice and straight as, as it rides through there. Um, so this was actually, uh, this is really a remix of two or three different designs that I saw on Thingiverse. 
Um, so I took those, uh, you know, there was one that I liked the, uh, the channel that this slides into. It was nice and tight, so I used that. There was another one that only had one of these pulleys. Uh, I, uh, I didn't see any that, that had two pulleys like this. And then, of course, none of them had this pocket here for the, uh, for the switch itself, so I, I designed that. Um, another thing I got out of Thingiverse was this arm. Uh, which of course, and, and the plug, uh, the connector that holds that into the channel right here. But of course I modified it and I redesigned the end of it here to hold this pulley. Okay, so now the filament rides through here and it, it comes down, it's got a nice arch. It runs down through here and then it goes under here and it goes into the extruder. As you can see, my filament snapped and that's because I am no longer buying this Tech Bear uh, filament, which happens to be brittle. I noticed that, um, I mean, I don't keep it in a controlled, humidity controlled environment, of course. Having said that, uh, I've bought other filament that doesn't do that. And as you can see, this literally snaps. Snaps right off. Look at that. That's crazy. Anyways, um, oh yeah, of course, let's not forget about this. So this was a design that I also copied off of Thingiverse. A uh, few modifications, I did redesign the entire thing, but the concept came from Thingiverse. So basically you have a nut sitting here that goes right through. The first time I printed it, I only printed it with 20% density, which obviously didn't work out because the nut snapped right off. Um, it has a, a nut over here that holds it on this, on the original bracket. And then it has two cones, one over here, and one over here with the ball bearing inside, which I have for my tractor. Uh, and they, they are clean, they work very well, and it allows you to basically size this for whatever uh, roll, uh, um, roll size uh, you might have. And then of course, one nut on the end, and I found that you cannot tighten this too much, otherwise it does provide some resistance. So I, I printed a second one that allows me to kind of uh, um, um, tie the two together and hold them so they don't, uh, they don't, they don't, it doesn't come off by itself. So that's kind of the summary of all the changes. Now, before I start opening these boxes, which I need to do that because one of my Sonoff uh, switches, the Sonoff Basic, tends to shut off, tends to shut off by itself, and that kills the Raspberry Pi, which obviously is not good for the Pi itself. So I need to change that uh, Sonoff uh, Basic in there. Um, uh, one more thing before I go to the switches is the uh, camera bracket here that holds the uh, the camera. Um, I sort of designed this uh, basically to use the, some, some of the concepts that were already out there on Thingiverse. Some of it came from the guy that designed this box here. Uh, some of it I kind of adapted it like this 90 degree angle here and the ball joint right over here. So this allows me to basically swing it where I want it, raise it, raise it if I want to, and then to position this anywhere I want to. And it, and it works very well. When I don't need it, it goes out of the way. It's far away enough from you know being able to control these knobs and so on. So back to the switches. Okay, so the switches are basically tied directly to the um, uh, to the switch that's on the Sonoff uh, devices. So this happens to be the replacement Sonoff uh, basic that I purchased to, to th that's going to go and replace the one that's in there now. This happens to be a basic RF, which I didn't need, but it was the same price. Um, so as you know, when you push the switch, if you hold it down, uh, you put the sawn off in programming mode, which obviously after the first time you don't need to do that anymore. But also you can use that switch to toggle uh, the relay manually. So what I did is I basically tapped onto these switches uh, the three Sonoffs that are in there, I just tapped onto those two contacts right there and basically brought the wire through this um, uh, ribbon cable right here inside this box, which I also designed and 3D printed. So this switch allows me to shut down the Raspberry Pi. So this is tied off on uh, one of the GPIO pins, between one of the GPIO pins and ground. There is a command line that you need to input in your config.txt file. And when you push that, uh, what that does is it closes one of these Sonoff uh, SV, the Sonoff SV, which is, uh, there's no 110 volts in there. And as you'll see from the diagram that I'll uh, include at the end of this video, um, it allows you to do a temporary pulse of a half a second. And it just basically closes the circuit on those two uh, GPIO pins between that GPIO pin and ground. And it, it shuts down the Raspberry Pi. And then this one kills the power to the Raspberry Pi. 
Uh, this one here uh, turns on and off the power supply of the machine. And then this one here turns on and off the lamp. And again, these are all connected to that ribbon cable to these uh, uh, switches of, the, of each sawn-off device that's inside the box in the back. And then finally, this LED is also connected to the Raspberry Pi, so I know when the, when the, when the server is on. Uh, so basically what I do to shut that off is I give it a, a push that sends that temporary signal, it resets the, uh, it shuts down the Pi, the LED goes out, a few seconds later you can actually kill the power to the Raspberry Pi safely without damaging the, the, uh, the SD card. And again, with this one you can turn on and off the old printer, and with this one you can turn on and off the lamp. Which of course you can control remotely through the uh, eWi Link app, or I actually have these show up in my uh, home assistant. So I have a, a page uh, set up in my home assistant that allows me to control these switches. It also allows me to see the camera. Um, it also allows me to see the temperatures of the bed, of the, of the tool and everything, which is information sent by the Octopi server. And of course I can switch to the Octopi webpage itself, that allows me to do more controls there uh, on the temperature and such. It allows me to turn on these lights through the GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and that's about it. So it's kind of a mix, mix of, mixture of the two websites that I use, uh, web pages that I use to kind of control this remotely. For the most part, once I set it off to print something and I leave the room, I use the Home Assistant uh, screen to kind of monitor the printer. So I can see what temperature it's got, I can turn the light on and off remotely and, and look at the camera and see what uh, percentage uh, printing status uh, it's at. And that's it. And of course, if there's a problem, then I come up and, and look at it. So I'm gonna open these boxes now and I'll show you what's inside. Okay, so let's start here at the Octopi server. Here's what the box looks like inside. As you can see, it fits right over the rail. This was really a nice design. I gotta give a, um, a credit to the, the person that uh, uh, developed this uh, to begin with. And um, the only thing I changed is underneath the, uh, this, the, the Raspberry Pi, there was a, there was a tray. Uh, that was just sitting there, but it was it was not functional because the standoffs for the screws were essentially uh, standing up there on their own. So I cut out cut that out, so it's fully open underneath. There is also uh, some breather holes in this uh, uh, divider that goes in the middle there. I did design a bottom for it, so I added some uh, pillars that go there on each corner, and the two in the front hold a back uh, a plate that goes underneath. Let me raise that. Okay, a little dark under there, but as you can see, there's a plate that goes all the way up to this point, to basically to the end of the box itself. And then this box that I designed kind of comes over and it hugs the other two at the end. So it doesn't move back. Okay, so the beauty of this box is that also it hides the uh, USB connector for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, of course, there is no ethernet connector there. Uh, and that's the only cable required to connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer, as you know, so there is no need to use the others. So here is the Sonoff SV. This allows me to have, uh, you know what, I'm gonna start from the back here actually, because everything starts with the 110 coming in, in fact. So I have the 110 coming in from here, and it goes into these, this connector right here, the splitter. This splitter gives me 110 volts to this uh, Sonoff uh, POW right there, and then the Son of TH, and then the Son of Basic, which is the one I have to replace now. Uh, <clears throat> the Son of T, uh, the Son of Basic, uh, powers up my 12 volt power supply. This was a, a 12 volt brick power supply uh, from a laptop, and I opened it up, and everything came out perfectly. I removed the original connector, and so now it's wired into the splitter. So it gets 110 volts coming in. Sorry, this is wired into the uh, uh, Sonoff Basic, okay? So when the Sonoff Basic uh, closes the relay, it gets 110 volts there, which goes and it powers this guy. The volts goes into the back converter, but it also goes through um, the relay here uh, to, power, uh, the, to power up the LEDs that are under here. There is also, by the way, just three LEDs that are sitting right there. So you can see the LEDs right there. They don't do a great job at illuminating the table itself, but there's something there. It's always, it's always dark under there. 
Uh, so the 12 volt supply powers my LEDs as well as the buck converter, which when the power supply is turned on, it powers the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the relay module here is a five volt relay module. So that is powered by the output of the buck converter as well. And then uh, this is the Sonoff SV that is powered by the 12 volts of this power supply. So it doesn't put a strain on the uh, buck converter itself. So what happens is I actually, I'll show you a schematic on how I did that, but I actually cut the traces that go to the relays. So that way this guy is powered by 12 volts, but the relay is dry, meaning there is no power at the relay contact. So it is just used as a switch to close the circuit between the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Again, there is a, spe a specific GPIO pin that you close um, and uh, between, that, between ground and that uh, tells the Pi to shut down. This is set up in the EWI Link app to give me a, five, a half a second pulse. So it doesn't stay on, it just clicks and it, and it, and it releases. Uh, finally, this is the relay module, again, connected to the GPIO of the Raspberry Pi that I can control from the OctoPi that allows me to turn on and off this uh, LED light. And then the other relay is just open for future expandability. Uh, back here, again, each one of these Sonoff gets uh, 110 volts from here. Um, and then these, these are there, as you can see, the little ribbon cables there that go to each one. I glue them on top of the relay so that way it kind of acts as a strain relief. Okay, and each relay, uh, each zone off, again, it is set to power uh, a specific uh, component of the Raspberry Pi, uh, of the printer rather. Like I said, the basic turns on the 12 volt power supply, the son of POW turns on the power supply of the 3D printer that I can use to monitor the, the, the power consumption. And then the son of TH instead powers this plug which uh, is used to power my lamp uh, when I wanted to watch uh, the printer at night when the, when the room is dark. So this whole thing has these little dovetail, uh, half a dovetail right here, slides in there, and then the cover uh, slides on top of that, just like that. And then as you saw earlier, there is a screw here and a screw there, and, and everything works out really nice. And then again, these um, plug ends, Okay, and these plug ends kind of hold this thing here so it, it prevents it from sliding back. So that's it. Um, it's been um, a fun project and I'm glad I did it because, uh, like I said, it really became a rat's nest of wires all over the place. Every time I would go in the back of the printer to do something, I would step on some wire or another. Uh, so now all I have is one power plug and then, of course, the plug for the lamp that goes, that goes back here. So it's nice and clean. Oh, one more thing on the um, uh, filament sensor. Uh, again, this also goes to the GPIO pin of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it uses one of the um, uh, plugins of uh, the Easy Filament plugin of the of the OctoPi, and um, nothing special there. But the the well, somebody suggested is to use a coax cable, uh, shielded cable, in order to prevent interference from these motors. So I happen to have this uh, coax cable here, so that's why I, I have this. Um, so just to make sure that there is no interference. It does run in here uh, across all these 110 volts lines and everything, so I figured it would be a good uh, measure. And then goes right into the Raspberry Pi, and it plugs into these uh, rest nest of wires of the, of the GPIO pins right there. Uh, one of these uh, GPO pins is my five volts, of course, which is used to power the whole thing itself. So I do not use the um, USB cable that, that uh, connector that comes onto the side here. That's it. So this is uh, the whole thing. Uh, I used, by the way, uh, little Dupont connectors right there to connect these ribbon cables to the switches themselves. Um, so that's why you see uh, the ribbon cable there going all the way down and then it kind of splits up and, and it plugs into these uh, DuPont connectors. Uh, polarity is not uh, relevant, of course, it's just a switch, uh, but that's how I made that connection there so that I can easily remove it if I need to. Like now when I replace that Sonoff uh, basic in the back there. So this uh, switch set, uh, switch box here is actually very cool because it allows you to have manual control at the printer. So anyways, um, that's it. That's been my project for the past uh, about month or so between all the planning. 
Um, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to attach now the drawings of the different schematics um, and I'll show you what they look like. So like I said, I will put these uh, images at the end of the video, leave them on the screen for a few seconds so you can study them. But I figured I would run through them just to give an explanation of what all this is. So this is the initial conceptual uh, schematic of the whole setup. So again, you have the 110 volt line coming in. It powers the Sonoff POW that has its own manual push button switch, hardwired into that little switch there. Uh, this powers the printer 110 volt power supply that gives the 24 volts to power the uh, uh, motor controller. Uh, then you have 110 also go into the Sonoff TH with its own temperature humidity probe, its own little manual push button, and this powers the 110 uh, lamp that's connected to the printer when I want to monitor in the dark. And then finally the 110 goes to the Sono Basic with its own push button that powers up the 110 to 12 volt power supply, which through the buck converter powers the Raspberry Pi, and also powers the Sono SV, which has its own little push button. And then the uh, GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi have the filament runout sensor connected to it, as well as the two channel relay module connected to that, as well as the LED and the power for the printer, it's for the RPI itself, which I'll show you in the next slide. So uh, to go a little more in depth here, here's the uh, power block coming in, 110. It goes to each one of the uh, three Sonoff devices. And again, this one is the 110 to 12 volt supply, which gives us 12 volts. We'll see in the next page. This one goes to the printer uh, connector, which uh, is the standard connector that came with the printer. And then this goes to the 110 volt plug for the lamp, which is the plug that I added. These are the lines of code that you have to add to your config.txt file uh, in order to have the printer, uh, the RPI, right, the Raspberry Pi shut down upon pushing that button. And this is what you need to add in order to have the LED on the GPIO pins light up at the right time. So when the printer is lit up, here is the LED uh, that's connected to pin 8 and ground and through a 330 ohm resistor. This one will go on whenever the, the, the Raspberry Pi is on. Here again is the 12 volt line coming in from the other side and this powers the uh, uh, Sonoff SV. Make sure that you don't forget to cut these traces on the top side over here, right next to the relay, and on the bottom side uh, over here as well. And this isolates the contacts of the relay so there is no uh, line uh, uh, voltage coming in, which in this case would have been 12 volts. Uh, applied to your Raspberry Pi, not such a good idea. So this makes it so that this just becomes a dry contact. When I uh, actuate the Sonoff SV for half a second, it closes these two lines and it, con it makes a uh, uh, contact between pins five and six, which tells the, the, the Pi, the Raspberry Pi to shut down. And of course you have power going to pin two and ground. And then you have pins 11 and 13 connected as control lines to the uh, in one and in two of the relay module. Uh, the relay module is powered by the five volts of the buck converter. And I chose it to be 12 volt, uh, five volts rather instead of 12, because I really didn't want to apply any uh, other voltages near the Raspberry Pi. And by the way, if you notice, I kept the 110 volt all in the back of the printer in one box and all of the low voltage stuff on, the, on a different box on the side of the power supply. And then finally, these relay, this relay powers the LED strip uh, through the 12 volt relay uh, power supply itself. It goes through the switch and it powers that up. And then the other relay is open. Uh, here is the filament runout sensor. It's connected to pin 18 and 20 in my case and it is a normally open switch, so that way it's normally open when there is filament inside the, uh, uh, the two rollers. Uh, and when the filament is absent, this actually gets uh, closed and it shorts out the, it, it closes the, the, the two pins together and it tells the Raspberry Pi uh, the, the filament runout sensor um, plugin within the um, Octopa, Octobrain server software to, um, you know, to trigger the no filament situation. So this is the uh, schematic uh, of the whole thing in pretty decent detail. Um, and uh, again, this was a labor of love for about a month, month and a half. Each box took anywhere from six hours to uh, 12 hours to print in some cases. Uh, some things I had to redo, uh, like the box of the uh, power supply with a switch 
uh, where the switch sits. I printed it a one millimeter too small, so it didn't fit. So anyways, it's, it was fun. Um, and this is not meant to be, by the way, a how-to video. Uh, this is kind of basically detailing, uh, give, trying to give you some ideas on, on how I did all this. I will put the links in the description, uh, if I can find them again, of the uh, uh, to, to the Thingiverse uh, projects for the people that developed uh, some of those uh, components, so they get the credit. And other than that, that's it. So uh, constructive uh, comments are welcome. Other than that, have fun, make your own. Thank you. One more thing, by the way, I thought I would show you what the Octoprint uh, uh, server looks like, which you probably already know. And this is the LED lights that um, uh, I can turn on and off from here. You can hear the uh, relay clicking at the printer down there. And here's the auxiliary one that is not connected to anything at the moment. And then also the Home Assistant page that I have set up to monitor the printer so I can see the live stream right here or the screenshots that are captured uh, uh, at a time interval right there. I can turn the light on and off. You can see it's dark now. Turn that back on and now I got light. And so these are the stats that come directly into Home Assistant from the printer, current time, I added that actually. Uh, time elapsed, time remaining. The ambient temperature, this is the temperature and humidity from the uh, Sonoff TH sensor that you saw in the back of that box. Printer temperature, target, uh, bed, and nozzle, uh, target and actual for the bed and nozzle right there. And then this is the printer uh, power supply, which is the Sonoff uh, POW. I can turn that on. You can see uh, that the wattage goes up in a second there um, it will update just give it a second and here's how you do the um, uh, octopi shutdown so this is the sonoff sv if i click that it's going to click for half a second and turn back off and that led on that the green led on the box will go out uh, i can I, I will know that it's uh, shut down and then i can just turn it off right from here and then finally, this is the automation. Well, actually, here's the printer status. Again, this also comes off the Octopi server. Uh, it tells me that it's printing. In this case, it's not doing anything, as you can see. Uh, the, the state is currently unknown, but it just says no error when it's printing. Uh, print, job, print job percentage, and then whether there's any errors uh, that have occurred. Uh, not sure why the wattage hasn't updated yet, uh, but that should that normally comes right up. Uh, and then finally, again, the automation. I have three of them set up. Uh, this one turns off the 3D printer when the printing is finished. So again, it looks at this uh, uh, power consumption here. And when it goes below uh, nine or five, five or nine watts after uh, uh, five minutes, then it shuts off the printer. It shuts off the, the power right there. Uh, this one just uh, notifies me uh, that it's done printing. It does not shut off. And then this one shuts off and, notify, and notifies me that it's done printing. And the notification comes up in, on my iPad as well as my phone that are connected to Home Assistant. So Home Assistant, like I said, I use this one mostly uh, to monitor the printer once, it's, once I kick off a print job, obviously using Octoprint. And um, I don't do anything really. Once I, once I start it up, I don't usually change anything. So I use this just to, as, as a means of monitoring the printing. So anyways, just wanted to add that little tidbit there, um, which actually this is a huge aspect of why I decided to go with the Sonoff switches because I can control it from here without having to go into the Octoprint. With, through the Octoprint, you can control things, but you have to use the, the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins. And of course, other than shutting down the system here, you cannot physically shut off power to the Raspberry Pi. So you are kind of left incomplete once, it, once the print job is done. From here, instead, I can turn off the printer power supply. And then if I want to, I can turn off the entire, the entire uh, Raspberry Pi itself uh, server, uh, Octoprint server from here as well. I don't have any automations to do that for me right now, but I could uh, change this one so that after five minutes, 
it kills the power to the power supply it then triggers the shutdown let it wait a minute perhaps uh, which is more more time than it actually needs and then shut this down as well and then of course make sure that the light is off which is on right now and so that way my entire printer is done down safe and powered off and not drawing any power so anyways uh this is it have fun thank you bye